Hello everyone. What is an acromat? What is an apocromat? Let's find out together. My name is Dan Higgins and welcome to Astroworld. First of all, thank you everybody for tuning in and if you're happy with what you see, please subscribe and hit the bell to get all the notifications when Astroworld posts new data. And don't forget to visit astroworldweb.com to check out the players at Astroworld and see what we're up to. The refracting telescope can have a couple of designs, but there are some that come to mind. There's an achromat, an apochromat, and there's even a semi-apochromat. So let's go over a small history of the development of the achromat and the apochromat. The history of the achromat and the apochromat is actually quite scandalous. The invention of the first achromat was credited to Chester Moore Hall in around 1733. However, he wished to keep his invention a secret, so he contracted the manufacturer of the crown and flint lenses which are necessary to make the achromat to two separate lens makers by the name of Edward Scarlett and James Mann. I couldn't find out who made what, but one made the crown glass and the other made the flint glass, so they wouldn't put them together in order to figure out the design of the achromat. However, and this is the funny part, Mann and Scarlett in turn subcontracted their individual projects to the same person, and that man's name was George Bass. Bass was the one that actually realized that the two elements were for the same client and fitted the crown and flint together and noticed the achromatic properties. For whatever reason, George Bass decided to keep that a secret as well. He delivers the flint and crown glass to the specific subcontractors, Hall gets them, and puts the elements together and makes the first achromat in approximately 1733. Let's fast forward many years to the late 1750s. Bass actually remembers the invention of the flint and clown glass replication, and he mentions Hall's lenses to his friend named John Dolland. He actually recognized the benefits of the design and was able to replicate the achromat, and was therefore granted a patent for the achromat design in 1758. You could imagine that this was disputed by several opticians over the years. Finally, Dolan's son Peter in 1763, through the invention of the achromat, was then able to make an improvement on the achromat and actually invented the apochromat. Now that's some history. Let's see some of the differences. Before we get into the achromat telescope, if you're interested to see more of what a refractor actually does, feel free to go to my other video titled, What is a Refractor? And I'll put a link right up here. The achromat is generally a more inexpensive telescope than an apochromat. And just for easier talking, I'll refer to the achromat as an acro and the apochromat as an apo. When light goes through the lens of any telescope, the light waves are bent in such a way so they come to focus at the focus point. Each wavelength is bent a different amount because in order to get all the light focused at the same point, they need to be bent a different way due to their wavelength. Red, green, and blue light do not focus at the same position, and acro is correct for the blue and the red, where the green just falls a little short of the focus. This creates something called chromatic aberration. For example, this is what you might see around the moon, and this is called violet fringing and this is a direct result of chromatic aberration. This is why when you're doing astrophotography, many people tend to go with true apos instead of the doublet acro. Before we get into true apos, I'd like to call your attention to something called semi-apos. These are not true apochromats. They use something called ED glass, which stands for extra low dispersion. The ED glass uses better than a normal acro because the elements are treated in a way that lowers the chromatic aberration very well. Some ED glass may even contain fluorite, which would lower the chromatic aberration even more. But these are not true APOs. However, I've seen some retailers out there that may label their ED uh, telescopes as apochromats. So do some research and just be knowledgeable about what you are buying. The apochromat, or apo, adds a third element of glass bent so you can get all the light focused at the same point and that takes care of the chromatic aberration. 
This makes the app all more efficient for astrophotography because the colors are more accurate. However, they are much more expensive. And here's what a picture would look like with an apochromatic telescope. There are other types of refractors out there, such as quadruplets and quintuplets, but we'll go through that in another video. So there is the difference between the two types of refractors. If you're getting into astrophotography, I would steer everybody to a triplet, apochromat, or better. I'm not trying to say that you can't get great pics out of a doublet. Take a look at this pic taken with a Xenostar 73, which is a doublet. The color is outstanding, and it is a quality picture. Here is a pic that I took of the North American Nebula, and even though it's a narrow band, this is also taken with the triplet APO, my Skywatcher Esprit 80. So you can get good results with both, and it really depends on the budget. I really hope this helped everybody in some way, so if this did help you at all, or it was too basic, please let us know in the comments below. And as always, keep imaging, keep educating, and keep having fun. Clear skies. Thank you for watching.